Ladies and gentlemen, the president of Bugatti Automobiles, Mr. Wolfgang Durheimer. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the exclusive presentation of the Bugatti Chiron. Thank you for joining us this afternoon for this event that marks the beginning of a new chapter in Bugatti's history. After 10 years of the Veyron, which entered new dimensions and is now an icon, we are ready to continue this success story with the unveiling of the new Bugatti Supersports car, the Bugatti Chiron. I'm here today with my colleagues Willi Nettoschil, member of the Bugatti board and head of engineering, and Achim Anscheid, director of design, to present the new pinnacle of production supersports cars and to give you first-hand information about the new machine before we let you dive into the bus of the upcoming motor show. Ladies and gentlemen, it's part of human nature to break boundaries and to reach out for new records, to run the 100 meters even faster or to fly even further into space to discover new planets. Mankind always wanted to know how far can we go and can we go even further? People are driven by their aspirations and so is Bugatti. We asked ourselves, what do you do after you have already built the world's best super sports car? We started the new endeavor with a development brief that was the shortest I have seen in my entire career. And at the same time, the hardest you can think of. Namely, make the best even better. And I'm proud to say, and I know it's hard to believe that we have delivered. To accomplish this, we left behind us all the parameters we were familiar with and defined new ones that had not existed before. Where others stop, Bugatti takes one further step. With the Chiron, we have tested the boundaries of physics even further. There is no area where we have not become significantly better. The Bugatti Chiron is the new superlative in the automotive world. The Chiron is the first production supersports car in the world that delivers 1500 horsepower and a maximum torque of 1600 newton meters. While we allow the Chiron to go up to 420 kilometers as a maximum speed for road use, this is by no means the limit for us. The Chiron is ready to set the next world speed record. Our customers love performance. They want to know how far they can go in terms of speed and acceleration. And the Chiron will blow their mind. But they will also have lots of fun on fast winding roads because in terms of handling dynamics, this car has broken into a new dimension. Of course, the hallmark of modern Bugatti, the legendary W16 engine that our brand is famous for and that our customers love, will be the heart of the Giron. This engine, engine configuration is unique in today's automotive industry. The newly developed this power plant and added the new Bugatti two storage turbocharging, which enables breathtaking acceleration at all times and an absolutely unique linear power curve. The Chiron has the most technically advanced carbon fiber monocoque and an anonymously high degree of rigidity, which you normally only will find in LMP1 race cars. With its unique combination of performance-relevant features, the new active air brake, the new adaptive chassis, and a comprehensive active aerodynamic setup, the Chiron stands out from any other super sports car in the market in creating a perfect balance of ultra-performance and at the same time 
comfort. High performance tires tested on aircraft test benches and the strongest brakes in the industry using Formula One technology are just a few more examples of what makes the Giron the new superlative. The Giron is the world's most intelligent production super sports car. Our state-of-the-art electrical and electronic systems with their controls and displays are newly developed and have been tailored to meet the needs of high-performance sports car drivers in the best possible way. And those who want to hear more than the gorgeous sound of the 16-cylinder engine can turn on the most exclusive and luxurious high-end sound system ever fitted into a super sports car. This makes the Giron the fastest concert hall on earth. No other super sports car of this caliber completed such a demanding and complex test program. We ran more than 30 test cars. The Giron underwent more than 300 hours of wind tunnel testing and did more than 500,000 test kilometers. The Giron complies with worldwide safety standards and it meets the toughest quality requirements that exist in the car industry. Ladies and gentlemen, like no other super sports car, the Giron combines innovative technologies and performance with an exclusive design, luxury and comfort. This makes us truly unique. The car is the most modern interpretation of our brand DNA. Its design embodies lots of beauty with significantly more beast. We will not disappoint our customers in offering the luxury they are used to. There are unlimited customizing possibilities with the most exclusive materials and high-tech products. It goes without saying that the materials used in the Giron are the real deal. What you see is what you get. The exposed carbon fiber comes with a quality that is unparalleled in the industry. Inside, you find the finest leathers possible. Ladies and gentlemen, the Chiron is setting new standards in every respect. It's only available to a very small number of automobile connoisseurs who are looking for the best of the best. The Chiron will be limited to 500 cars. Customer response is outstanding and shows that we made the right decision in the development of this car. To this day, we have received pre-orders for one third of the total production run. Those who have dealt with Bugatti, with Bugatti and its unique selling proposition in the past simply cannot get around the Giron. The price starts at 2.4 million euros. The Chiron will certainly be built at our headquarters in Molsheim. We look forward to delivering the first production car to the first customer in autumn 2016. Thank you very much. Director of Design of Bugatti Automobiles, Mr. Achim Anscheid. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's a pleasure and also quite an honor to show you the very first images of the Bugatti Chiron. I admit openly, there was a lot of teasing in the last couple of months, where we showed you video footage, spy shots, uh, and probably the biggest teaser of all was this project, the Vision Grand Turismo in Frankfurt 2015, where we did not only show our passion and our heart for performance and for motorsport, but where we also gave key DNA elements away of the future car to come from all sides. But now, the teasing is over. The moment has arrived to present to you the production car of the Bugatti Chiron. Thank you. After 10 years of waiting for this day, you can imagine this feels quite good. Um, I'm not going to explain this car to you with a set of styling lines, fashionable styling lines, because I can't. We had a different kind of task to do here in this 
on this car. And this task I would call form following performance. My team followed form following performance. And what that means, if you allow me, I would like to go through in the next 10 minutes of the presentation. The first thing that you're gonna see of the Chiron in your rear view mirror is the eight eye face centered around the horseshoe. The iconic horseshoe sitting right at the nose of the car. And you're gonna ask me now, what does that to do with form following performance? Where's the performance element? Well, you know for a supercar, one of the vital elements in the frontal area of the car is the brakes, are the brakes and the brake cooling. And yes, we maximized everything that we could in the traditional areas to get air to the brakes, but actually the setup and the architecture of the headlamps is an active cooling element and quite unique, and we lead all the 100% pressure that arrives up there directly into a channel, into a channel directly into the, into the brakes and out of the wheel, enduring the performance of the brakes quite significantly. It's a designer's job to speak about proportion. I will look at the front of the car. We took out the color breakup that we had there. Go ahead, take it. Uh, we took out the color breakup that we had there, making the car maximum wide. We introduced a horizontal split on the bottom, maximum width, classic air intake, maximum width, pushed the headlamps out to the very corner to give maximum width expression in frontal view. You also noticed a new form language that is extremely generous in the calm surfacing and the reflection-based surfacing, interrupted and guided by character lines that show up in places that I'm, I'm going to get to in just a moment in the presentation. Now, in side view, we come probably to the most important element that we can see on the Bugatti Chiron, and that is the Bugatti line. And yes, we can all be romantic and say this line relates to the signature of Ettore Bugatti or relates to the Type 41 Royale in graphic or relates to Louis Chiron's signature. Yes, 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 but no, there is more to this line. There is more to this line. Firstly, this line really reflects on the interior with the exterior. The center line arrives in the front, shoots into the interior, is the carrier for the center console, is the carrier for the interior lighting, is the carrier for the roof module. But secondly, and that is the important part of this presentation, this line is a line of performance. And how so? Let me explain. Got my little stick. The air aerodynamically that is traveling and passing by the front wheelhouse is relatively turbulent when it should arrive back here. We actually found out through a rel our relatively round windshield that we have in our A-pillar construction that the air that is traveling along the side glass is actually arriving with almost 100% pressure in this area and it makes the complete area from down here to up there to a complete performance element, a performance line taking all the air in and that's how that line came about. And that is a good example of form following performance and not just a stylistic drift into shapes. Again, for a designer, most importantly, proportions first. The car, if you remember, beauty and beast, it was a commitment for engineering that the car is quite a bit more beast. It is a commitment for stylistic development that the car will be stylistically quite a bit more beast. The car has a stronger stance, as you can see. Larger wheels, 20 and 21, make the car sit more agile on its feet and a much faster fly line that you see there and a much faster horse uh, haunch line from the rear make the car even in standstill already you know dynamically thrusting forward even though we allow ourselves and this is different to other supercar manufacturers we still allow ourselves a relatively relaxed belt line actually a falling belt line and this is typical for bugatti beauty and beast in this correlation. We speak about beauty then. With these two lines we have a chance really to outline the elegance of the elongated fender signature. Through this rear haunch line we managed to get actually quite a bit of length 
into the car. Staying with beauty, the duotone of a Bugatti is such a classic DNA element no, of, of Bugattis, of modern day Bugattis especially. More than 50% of Bugatti customers are ordering their car in a duotone outline. And the Chiron is equipped to do exactly the same. And not with a color split that is painted onto the body part somewhere. No, the color split at Bugatti is always a technical color split, meaning the body parts create the separation of the colors. So that a customer in the future still configure his A color and his B color on the car. If we fly on top of the car, and now I come back to these character lines that I indicated with the form language in the beginning, look at the character lines on this car, where they appear. And now I'm going to show you the next slide, and you will instantly recognize where those character lines are coming from. They come from the Type 57 Sur Bass Compresseur Atlantique. One of the strongest indications of those lines is obviously the center line. And when you look at the center line development on this car, starting from the horseshoe, going over the bonnet, shooting into the interior, out of the interior, onto the roof, over to the wing, all the way onto the rear wing, you get a sense of how strong this character line is typical for Bugatti and how much it does for our stylistic development. Small waist and big hips also works for cars. In designer speak, we call that coke bottling. The car is actually 40 millimeter, four zero wider, meaning 20 millimeter on each side. Now 20 millimeter, that doesn't sound like a lot, but in car designer terms, to create good proportions, that means a world. When you look at the car, the waistline is as tight as possible and all the width of the car was for the benefit of the stance and for the muscular offset on the car. Now, we come to the rear of the car and the cutaway rear end. Now remember, front end, form following performance, front architecture, side elevation Bugatti line, third element of form following performance is the cutaway rear end. Now a cutaway rear end I don't have to explain to you, it's not so revolutionary in the, in the industry. You know, it already worked in a 908 Porsche long tail, uh, and then moving on to the 917 and being victorious. We know what a rear end like this does to an ideal aerodynamic cutoff. But ever more so vital for our car is to get rid of all the hot air that is trapped in the engine compartment and that our power plant really creates. All the energy that that, that, that engine produces has a chance through the sub-pressure zone that is created behind this rear end to be sucked out of the engine compartment. And not only that, the complete engine hood on top is a sandwich base and that sandwich base leads partially down even to the lower areas of the engine and has the potential to suck out all the air from that and through the sub-pressure gets, gets uh, blown out towards the end of the car. And that makes it a, a vital and crucial element in our strategy, our stylistic strategy to work with engineering to the best possible effect what this car needed. Beast and beauty, beauty. We kicked in the cant rail, the roof rails of the car, quite a bit, yes, that makes the car sexy, we know that. And it's quite a nice benefit that you get an extreme offset from the cant rail, from the roof rail, all the way to the outside of the fender line. And it creates an area that shows beauty in itself without introducing any kind of line work. I brought one animation slide to, to show how that, how that reflection is, is traveling. And this is sometimes best for a designer when there is no special line or nothing, there's nothing going on on that surface other than sheer beauty. And there are certain fenders in the car industry that lift that beauty without any kind of line work. A 911 fender, for example, is one of them. Even though also Bugatti Veyron rear fender was a beautiful piece of sculpted surface development where the reflection speaks all the quality that is needed for a valuable car like that. We are now working with a full width rear wing. It's maximum 
with appearance, of course. And if you ever came down from 400 kilometers an hour, you know how vital and how important the air brake for Bugatti is. And lastly, sort of as a, as a goodbye signature, you have the single beam tail light, which is housed in a 1 meter 80 aluminum piece milled from full. And it's the final signature when the car draws away from you and has passed you. This was a flyover through the exterior. Just give me a chance with two slides to fly into the interior and speak about two things on the interior. You see that the interior layout is still based on the architecture that is symmetrical for a Bugatti and has its tradition also from a Type 57 over to a Veyron, over to a Chiron. But just like the exterior development and the technical development shifted towards the beast side, also the interior presents itself more dynamic into a separation of driver and passenger, a sportier layout. And that actually puts the driver in command in his position. Just the functions that he's sharing with the passenger remain in the center, quite reduced. Everything else moves to the steering wheel, meaning the launch control, the chassis setup, the start button, the information about the car, information about the media, and the respective screens in front of it. And then the car has a speedometer. Oh, the car has a speedometer, wow. Yes, but it's quite a special one. It shows 250 kilometers an hour at 12 o'clock and 500 kilometers at 5 o'clock, which is quite something. I call this slide a room with a view. Why? Because it's an analog instrument, just like a valuable watch that you're wearing on your wrist. Why is that important for us? There are so many people, they, in their whole life, they don't even get to see a Veyron or get to see, got to see a Veyron, or get to see a Chiron. And then once they see one, they, they look in, inside the car, and we didn't want that person really to see a black hole only of a free programmable display. We wanted to be, wanted to be visible, this one dual instrument there, and see what this car is about. And Bugatti is the star, the superstar of top speed, and that's why this is our instrument feature that we're featuring in a completely analog way, in the right materiality, we call this the Haute Horlogerie des Automobiles. And now since we're speaking about materials already, our materials are 100% authentic. We got a no plastics philosophy, we say in the studio. What you see is what you get. What really feels and touches and presents itself as aluminium is real aluminium, is real metal, exterior and interior wise. And lastly, to finish the fly out and fly over the car uh, where we started in the front of the car, we redesigned the logo from a 2D appearance to a 3D silver appearance. It's 970 silver with a produced in a hand MI process very laboriously to be sitting in the future on the front of our cars. This wraps up our presentation and we got 30 seconds to go and maybe as a final word. Um, I watched the Oscars last night uh, which explains maybe the darker areas under my eyes but um, I thought the film directors you know that have to produce a sequel to an already successful movie, they are or were in a similar position. How did we go from a Veyron to a Chiron and create an even more exciting car? And the only thing that leads us there is being authentic. Being, in, being authentic what we do. That was important to the design team and to the engineering team because it's important for our customers. Our cars need to present themselves good-looking, valuable, not only today, not only in five years, but in 10 years' time, or even 50 years down the road, to pass on our cars to our kids and grandkids. So, thank you very much. Also from my side, welcome to you. I will give you now a short introduction about the technical highlights of the Bugatti Chiron. Let us start with the powertrain. For the Bugatti Chiron, we developed a complete new W16 engine with 8-liter displacement, 1,500 
horsepower and 1,600 newton meter. Here you can see this engine, and especially uh, for the re reduction of the air intake uh, pre-pressure, we developed the whole air intake system in carbon fiber. That's not only this air intake tubes, what you can see there, this uh, rubber isolation system, especially their uh, intake manifold. I think you can believe and understand an intake system for a 16-cylinder engine. It's really complicated, and this is a one-piece design, complete in carbon fiber, uh, and uh, with this we could really reduce the pre-pressure. On the other side, uh, here we had to develop the exhaust system uh, to fulfill also the legislation uh, emission levels and also to reduce the back pressure. For this we installed pre, four pre-cats in the exhaust system and two main cuts uh, to fulfill all this. And from the beginning on of the development phase, there was one big question mark. And how to control so many power and torque during driving in a car. For this, we developed a special Bugatti two-stage turbocharging system. I will explain it uh, on one side. In summary, we have four turbochargers on both sides we have uh, two turbocharger, and I will explain it not only on the one side, then it's easier to explain. You can see this in the red circle. We have two turbochargers on this side, and one turbocharger is permanent active. That is the left one from this two turbochargers. The other one, the right one, we can manage and control this with a special flap in this area, in the exhaust manifold uh, with an electric actuator. With this system, we can uh, do the following. If you accelerate the engine, you put all the exhaust energy, that means a complete exhaust volume, only to one turbocharger. With this, we can react and speed up this turbocharger very, very high and fast. You can see this, we start the yellow curve at idle speed at 700 uh, revolution and the maximum torque of 1,600 newton meter we will achieve straight away on this curve at uh, 2,000 revolution. That means only in the, in the very small phase of 1,300 revolutions we are from idle speed to the maximum torque. But what, what's coming now in the second stage? The second stage means we are driving with four turbochargers and we will start uh, the second stage as 3,700 revolutions. And now let us look to the summary curve of uh, both stages. You can see between 2,000 revolution and nearly 7,000 revolution of the engine, we have the maximum torque of uh, 1600 uh, newton meter and this flat area in this phase it's very important to control the power with this flat area we could achieve a very straight line and proportional uh, power development between 2000 and uh, nearly six uh, seven thousand revolution let us have a look on the chassis side for the Chiron, it was clear we had to develop a complete new tire with our partner Michelin. So we could improve the contact phase between 12 and 14 percent. And as you can see on the spider diagram, for all areas we could improve a lot uh, the wet grip, the dry grip and so on. Only in one criteria, the high speed uh, stability, we achieved the same, but uh, that's not really a problem for us because there were more already in the past the best one. For the Chiron, we developed a special adaptive uh, chassis and aerodynamic system where we can adjust and uh, regular the right height, the damping characteristic, the four-wheel drive conditions 
there we have a special mode, easy to drift. And with the electric steering system, together with the aerodynamic control on the, on the front side, we have two flaps in the front diffuser area, and on the rear side, we have the rear wing. Uh, together with the stability and brake control, we can adjust most, not most, all the possible technologies where we can adjust the right and handling and the traction condition. With four different modes, we uh, support the driver at this button on the right side. Uh, it's located in the steering wheel that the driver can select different modes. The first one is the auto EB mode. That means it's a special mode. The car will doing everything in the right condition. It's like uh, a daily driving. He, st he steps in and can drive. Then we have a special autobahn mode. That means it's a special top speed for uh, highway condition, especially for European auto, uh, autobahn. And we have the third one is the handling mode, especially for race track. The fourth one is the lift mode. This you need if you go over ramps or maybe in the garage uh, to cross uh, some special to uh, things. And last but not least, it's, let me say, it's a highlight for a Bugatti. It's a top speed mode, and there we, uh, this will be activated by a top speed key. For such a car, for, for this uh, acceleration and top speed, clearly we have also uh, developed a new brake uh, generation. Here we made a special development with a uh, bionic design for the caliper. Uh, it's a, uh, a, a one, one part forged aluminum caliper with eight or on the rear side six titanium pistons and uh, it's complete milled after forging. On the front side we increased, the uh, front and rear side we increased uh, the disc about 20 millimeters and all these features together, it's Formula One technology because we, uh, the, the cost and the, 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 the process behind this is really high sufficient and you find this only in Formula One or maybe LMP1. Now let us come to the structure. It's also clear for such a car we need a very stiff structure uh, which fulfill clear the weight uh, condition and also the safety condition. Especially for the uh, stiffness, we made a complete new monocoque with a complete rear frame in carbon fiber. That's complete new. Uh, you can see the rear frame, it's really a massive frame uh, where we integrate all the components to fit the space inside in the car. And also only with this we could really achieve this uh, amount of stiffness, we achieved 50,000 Newton meter per degree, torsional stiffness, and uh, bending stiffness about uh, 0.25 uh, millimeter per ton. This is, let me say, it's normally not to measure if you want to bend this car. From the electrical side, uh, as you have already seen from my design colleague, uh, in the center of the instrument cluster, we have the analog speedometer. On the left side, you have a higher re revolution, resolution uh, display where you can see all the performance information like power meter, uh, engine revolution, and all the dynamic things. On the right side, you have the HMI information like radio information, navigation, phone, and, and so on. And clear, one of the very important things for such a car in this uh, top speed class is the aerodynamic. Uh, here we divide the aerodynamic features in two sides. One is the active uh, uh, side and one, the other one is the passive. On the active, uh, the active features, there we can uh, adjust and uh, 
control the rear wing and on the front side, the front flaps was a front diffuser. And in each mode, what we already explained for the auto mode, autobahn, handling, and top speed, you can adjust the right condition and uh, support, uh, give the best support and uh, condition for the driver. So the other uh, features we say is passive because it's permanent, active. It's mainly on the ground floor of the car. The ground floor is completely closed. Uh, we have on the front side a special uh, splitter geometry. We have strakes for downforce <laughs> in the front area. And on the rear side, we have a uh, special geometry for the rear diffuser. Also this, uh, let me explain a little, little bit more detailed. Uh, on the front side, we have two uh, aerodynamic features. One is the air curtain, but it's a special air curtain to reduce really the, uh, the drag of the car and to support the brake cooling system. For the brake cooling system, you can see in the bottom, uh, we have three cool air channels to the brake on each side. We go directly inside in the, in the brake, go through the brake, and then we have a pat pat patented uh, brake shield, which avoids the t uh, that the temperature comes to the rim and bring it with special wings outside of the, of the wheel. And then the, uh, the, the, the air curtain support really that the hot temperature and hot air goes outside. Now let us come to the aerodynamic and technical properties of this car. Uh, I don't really explain all these uh, figures, but one is very important, is the handling mode. Where we, there we could improve a lot uh, the efficiency uh, against the Veyron, that means especially for top speed. In the top, top speed area, we will have much more performance with the same uh, horsepower level. And in the bottom you see also the lift, that means the characteristic of downforce, the lift coefficient on the front and on the rear side. Now let us look for the performance data of this car. We will achieve 420 kph in the top speed mode. Uh, it will be limited only for record drives or for special events. We will open this. And in the handling mode, that means with maximum downforce, we will achieve 380 kph, and also this is limited. Uh, for acceleration and brake uh, distance, let me only mention two important figures. That is 0 to 300 kph in 30.6 seconds, and from 300 kph to zero in 200, 275 meters. Thank you very much for your attention. To create something unique, a masterpiece of art in its own right, precious, intuitive, and of lasting value. and passion of Carlo, Jean, Rembrandt, and Ettore Bugatti. According to the ingenious founder, Ettore, every Bugatti had to be a holistic masterpiece in art, form, and technique, thus creating automotive legends like the Bugatti Type 35, the Royale, and the iconic Atlantic. From both a technical and aesthetic point of view, the Bugatti Veyron was the company's latest masterpiece with breathtaking performance and of striking beauty. Now, it's time to move forward and to see the next step. The Bugatti Chiron.
Ladies and gentlemen, this is a new dawn. And we are now entering into the next chapter of our corporate history. Ladies and gentlemen, the ultimate super sports car, the Bugatti Chiron. One time, got the lift system up already, that's going to make it easy. Yeah, if Porsche offered me a GT3 RS, I would not take a second to think about buying one. Let's jump in. 